once more into the breach, dear friends. Hi, everybody. Welcome back. Lovely to have all of you with us. Today's little chess lesson. We're going to continue our study of the weak F7 square. Also applicable, the weak F2 square for white. And the reason we call it the weak F2 or F7 square is it is only being defended by the king on F2 or here the king defending F7. So what we are going to be looking at is known as the fried liver attack. You heard that correct. One thing about chess is that it has a lot of amazing names. You can play the Sicilian, the Sicilian dragon, the Catocan, the fried liver attack, the Roy Lopez, so many amazing names. And this is a classic. Oftentimes, the second opening learned by many a young chess player. As you may recall, uh, one of the first openings junior chess players learn is known as the four-move checkmate, sometimes called the fool's mate, um, but the four-move checkmate. And what white is going to be doing is, is going to be throwing the kitchen sink on f7. Let's have a quick look. The white pieces will open up with e4, an extremely common move in many, many openings. And if black responds with e5, also very common. If you're doing a four-move checkmate, White immediately brings out the bishop okay. to c4, adding the first attacker to the weak f7 pawn. If you're playing a, the, by the way, the immediate correct response, if you're playing black and you see this move, is simply knight to f6. You're applying pressure to the center pawn, and you're effectively getting rid of any possible shenanigans uh, with the queen. But let's assume that me, in this case, um, I'm a very junior player, and I play a move, uh, maybe such as this. I just use the other knight. Seems harmless enough. White, of course, then brings out the queen to either f3, or she can come all the way to h5. And now we have the second attacker, bishop and queen on f7. And if black does not play a correct move, of which there are many options here, but if black blunders at this move, her juncture and plays knight to f3. It is too little, too late. Had the knight been here, it of course would have been defending that square. But it is not, and now white casually slides the queen behind the defenses, and we have checkmate. Okay. Now, as I've said before, listen, and I tell this to my students, the four-move checkmate is not good chess. It's dangerous chess. It basically puts white in a very precarious position. Uh, if black 
has any idea what it's doing, uh, it should be a pretty easy victory for the black pieces. White is developing the queen too early, and there's just a lot of theory that takes that apart. So, the second opening many a young chess player learns is the famous fried liver attack. And it is also going after the weak F7 pawn. The name derives from Italy, from somewhere in the early 1600s, possibly late 1500s, um, from the name uh, Fagiatello, or Fagiatello, Fagiatello, forgive me, my, I don't speak Italian. Um, but the word fagiatello, meaning uh, fried liver, or in colloquial Italian, uh, means cooked. As in, if you play this opening as white, you're going to cook your opponent. Well, let's just say this is a very, very sharp, sharp opening. Let's take a look, shall we? White opens up the same way we just did. As with many moves, we want to open the garage door. With e4, we open the garage door for our bishop to escape. If black plays the same responding move, which you will often see, especially at... Uh, lower levels of chess play, although I shouldn't even say that. This move is played at grandmaster levels, so what have you. The second move in the fried liver attack is to bring your knight here to f3. Again, we are trying to control the center. We are putting pressure on uh, black's center pawn here on D, I'm sorry, E5, and to defend the pawn, black will often play knight to C6, adding extra protection here, defending the pawn here. Now is when white brings out their bishop to C4, announcing what is uh, known as the Italian game, the Italian game, or also known as the bishop's opening. And it is only now if black plays the following move that white may launch into a fried liver attack. And that move now is the move knight to f6. If the knight does not come to f6, we can't do a fried liver attack. If, for example, we simply bring out our bishop in a little copycat game, if the knight goes here being thinking, ha ha, I am going to fry a liver attack, oh, it doesn't work because the queen would simply pluck off the knight. No bueno. So, in order to fry the liver, the knight must come out to f6. And as many a excited junior chess player will now do, is they will launch the fried liver attack, which by now I'm guessing you saw, which is knight to g5. Knight to g5. So now the bishop and the knight are attacking the weak f7 pawn. And here we go. We have... Uh, left this center pawn hanging, but the threat here of the fork is pretty, pretty powerful. If we're playing a brand new player who truly does not see the dangers they are in at the moment, um, perhaps you would see a move like bishop here for unknown reasons, or, listen, I've seen many crazy moves. Um, maybe they push the pawn to kick the knight. Of course, by now, it's too late. And to complete our fried lover attack, we have 
two options. Both options are fun. Option number one, the fork. Knight captures. F7, forking the queen and the rook. Uh, black would want to save one. I'm guessing you want to save your queen. Develop the queen. Knight takes rook. And all seems well. You know, we are up material. It will be difficult to save this knight. But white is up the exchange. So the other option, the slightly safer option, is uh, to capture with check with the bishop. Bishop captures, check, forcing the king to move, and after the king moves out of the way, bishop simply backs up. Game continues, and black can no longer castle. Um, your job is done. White will continue development, go ahead and castle, and play shall continue. So, that is part one of the fried liver attack. Now let's look at what black often does in this situation when they notice they have been fried livered. Let's put our knights back where they were. Okay. So, after knight comes here, announcing the threat, the major and only way of actually blocking this attack is by playing pawn to d5. Sensible looking move. This pawn is simultaneously adding a double attack on our uh, e4 pawn. Of course, it is attacking the bishop, and very importantly, it blocks the knight from capturing. Okay. Problem solved, white may think. Uh, or, I'm sorry, black may think. Well, white simply responds with a capture. Alright, no big deal. And it would appear that black has some simple counterplay. This pawn is being threatened by the knight and the queen, so we have a two attackers, only one defender. A very natural move is to, oh, and the pawn, of course, isn't attacking our knight here, is to capture back. Knight captures back, and black may be like, okay, no problem. Well, this is when the real fried liver attack begins. For white is about to unleash some fury. White ignores the lack of attack, or the lack of double attack, and strikes with the knight with the fork, forking the queen and the rook. The natural move uh, is to say, well, wait a minute, haha, <laughs> the knight is blocking queen is defending, I can go ahead and take this knight, no problem. And white may think, or black thinks, okay, I'm up material. White has two points, so two pawns, I have four, even though my king's out of position. Hey, what could go wrong? The answer is many, many things. Can you spot white's next move? If you found queen to f3, congratulations. We are now putting our king in check, and now we have our own double attack on the knight to win back material. The correct move in this scenario is to bring the king either back or forward, but let's say hypothetically for demonstration purposes the king runs away from the queen's check and it sneaks back here thinking it's safe oh no k 
taken you, Spot, the forced mate in three. Very good. Bishop takes knight. Check. Queen takes, well, I guess you could block with the bishop here first, but the most prolonged attempt is we must sacrifice our queen to get out of check. There's no other way to get something to this square. Queen takes queen. And the only legal move left for black to play is bishop blocks the check temporarily, but it's useless and sad. For after queen takes bishop, that is indeed check and mate. King is under attack, no way of blocking. Checkmate. So that's one variation of the fried liver attack. And I wish you good luck. Now here's what I want to look at next though. If you're playing black, you might think, wow, the fried liver attack is a really, really powerful attack. I should avoid that at all costs. Au contraire, mon frère. Let us turn the board around and let's play now from Black's perspective and see what you think. see the move. 
If you found bishop captures f2 with check, congratulations. Now, if you know what you're doing, this game leads to head-splitting complications. It gets very difficult. However, if you're playing a player who's used to playing the fried liver attack, this move will probably be world-ending for them. Because after king takes bishop, maintaining the threat of the fork here and here, we take the bishop. Black continues to ignore the knight and begins the attack with knight takes e4 check. Now this is very important because now the queen is free. Black, I'm sorry, white has quite a few legal moves here. If you'll notice, we can move forward one square diagonal. We have five squares. We can actually move to six squares, seven squares, six squares we can move to. Apparently, in the best move that does not seem all that obvious to me is moving back here. That apparently is the best option and will lead to a crazy game. But if white um, plays something different, let's say uh, white brings the king forward, adding pressure to the knight, um, things go very, very, very badly, as you, you might imagine. What black is basically going to do nine out of ten times in these scenarios his queen is going to slide out to h4, defending the knight, getting it out of this knight's way, and preparing to do some dangerous, dangerous things. If white is a greedy player and they go, but wait a minute, I, that, I want that rook. I want this delicious rook. And they capture, well, this leads to mate rather quickly. Do you all see the first move? That's right. Queen to F4 with check. The only legal move the king cannot capture because of the pawn we, in fact, have only one legal move, which is to tuck ourselves right back to here, right? Because the queen is defending here and here and here and everything here. So the only legal move the king can do is right back here temporarily. And we have uh, some devastation here momentarily. Do you all see it? Queen to F2 with check. Forcing the king out and up the board. Followed by what move? It is actually almost mate. After night here with check. The only legal move the king can do is capture the knight, followed by something quite devious, which is queen goes back. And if we look closely, we'll see that this is checkmate. The king cannot capture the pawn due to the queen. The king cannot capture the queen due to the pawn. No, 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 B5. 
because of the knight guarding the square. Same here. So, this is a quick introduction to the Traxler defense. If you would like to learn more, I highly, highly recommend examining some of the many wonderful chess videos there are on YouTube. Uh, specifically, uh, Gotham Chess, which I will put a link in the description to, um, is a wealth of knowledge. Uh, if you're a fan of chess, highly recommend following Gotham Chess. And he does a much more in-depth analysis of the fried liver attack and this amazing Traxler defense counter-strike. But if I have piqued your interest in the game of chess even a little bit, my work here is done. So my friends, sleep tight, enjoy the rest of your evening, afternoon, or possibly even morning, and I look forward to seeing you again very soon. Take care, and good luck with your chess.